This is Escape Pod. Visit our website at outbreakpodcast.com. And now here's your hosts, Tony Brown and David Anthony. Welcome out to this episode of Escape Pod. I'm one of your hosts, David Anthony. Tony Brown is taking the night off. He's out, been working hard all day on the farm, so he needs a little, needs a little break. But we have a special guest with us tonight, Joshua Starnes. Hello, Joshua. Hey, David. Thanks for having hey. me on. Oh, man, it is a pleasure to have you on. Joshua, you are the publisher, uh, one of the publishers of The Box by uh, Red 5 Comics, correct? That's right, and the creator. And the creator, and the creator, <laughs> can't forget that part. It's a little important. <laughs> oh goodness, goodness! So we're excited to have you tonight, and uh, we want to definitely want to get into uh, to the to the comic that uh, that you're here to promote, and 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 all about the uh, uh, you know about the the uh, Red Five Comics, uh, the company. And uh, but we uh, first let's uh, let's kind of go back. Let's take people back to um, you know what got you, I guess, interested in uh, in comics. Yeah, I'd have to go like all the way back to to being uh, I'm a old, uh, so <laughs> I'm a child of the '80s. I, I you know grew up in the early '80s, so very much about uh, Saturday morning cartoons, <laughs> and, yep. exactly, and afternoon cartoons. You know, when I was like five and six years old, there wasn't anything much better than uh, than GI Joe and Transformers uh, in the afternoon or uh, on Saturday mornings. And uh, so when I, I discovered that, you know, back when they still had comics at 7-Elevens, uh, you know, discovered that they actually had uh, mm -hmm. G.I. Joe comics and Transformer comics and Star Wars comics. And I was like, oh, there's more. I, I don't just have to wait for the shows. I can I can read this stuff every week. So I got hooked on those. And that was sort of my uh, my gateway drug. And it wasn't long before that that I started seeing ads in the back for Spider-Man and X-Men, and uh, which I, I had a... A general knowledge of from spider-man cartoons but that was about an electric company but that was about it and so i was like yeah. oh this is comic books too i want to read those and uh, before long i was headlong into anything marvel had to have and from there into uh, into dc and then discovering teenage mutant ninja turtles and it was just uh off to the races which is why and, and i and I, I guess i get a little bit of from my, my parents i never give anything away so I, I i don't have all those comics from when i was a kid but uh I do have some of those things that that six and seven year old me built. Some of them still have a cover. A lot of them don't. I I beat those. I read those things until covers fell off, but I didn't get rid of them. I yep. uh, I just put them in a box, and they kind of traveled with me when I went to college and when I moved in my first apartment. And I actually do still have a lot of them in a, in oh, a bunch wow. of long boxes here in the office with oh, me. Oh wow! Look at so, all those. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, it's 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 not quite the size that it used to be. At one point, it was getting really out of hand and took up an entire room by itself. And uh, so I, I did have to, over time, pare it down to to just the bare essentials. But uh, I'll never, sure, be sure. I'll never let it go. <laughs> yeah. So so if that's the bare essentials, you must have some good stuff in there. That's, that's all right. I'm saying. There's some there stuff. you go. There is some yeah. stuff. I could talk for a long time on just some of the stuff in the boxes. And well, you know, I and, and I, kept it. well, you're very lucky uh, that you were smart enough. Uh, you know, to, uh, to, to take those with you to college, you know, uh, you know, some parents are different, but there's a lot of parents. As soon as your kids are gone, they're like, woohoo, cleaning house. Let's throw mm -hmm. it away. Let's trash it. Let's give it away. Let's, I, I can't tell you how many, uh, baseball cards and good stuff that, you know, that got, um, put in garage sales and I didn't realize it. Then I came back yep. and oh, where'd it go? Oh, yep. you didn't want that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want that. Yeah, exactly. With this. Exactly. Uh, I guess, then uh, I, some obsessions, I get uh, obsessiveness is just uh, it works out in your favor in the long run sometimes. Right, right, right. And, and like I said, it's your parents, you know, obviously they they realized you had a passion they for it, it and kind yeah. of, yeah, they got it, kept it, kept an eye for it. And that's good. That's really yeah. good. So, one of the lucky ones. That's all I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> and, uh, and like the whole idea of just, you know, I'd always wanted to, to write, com I always wanted to write, I knew that, and I always wanted to write mm -hmm. comics because, you know, my two loves kind of folding into each other and I, I, I stayed with it and I didn't kind of fall out of it. So I worked uh, in retail, I worked at a comic store all through college. Uh, so I had, I, had, uh, I you know, I, I didn't fall out of comics, kind of fell further into it. And, and I was studying writing while I was in co college um, and uh, thinking about, uh, yes, right, wanting to write comic books, but you know, plays or, or books or short stories or, or something else you can't make a lot of money out of, but you really like doing. And um, 
I had actually moved from that into uh, some of my first paid writing was actually um, film criticism because I'm also always been a, a big movie buff. Um, and, uh, you know, amazing it's people who love comics, love movies, your visual storytelling, you know, appealing to, to somebody on, on multiple levels. Right. Uh, so um, a, a friend of a friend was working as a, a film critic for a, a fairly large film site called ComingSoon.net. And uh, they were looking for uh, some extra, you know, they had too much stuff to cover and they were looking for some extra people. And I got uh, recommended to them. And, um, you know, that was in 2004. And I, I'm still actually we're spending some time as a film critic. So 16, 17 years later, uh, wow. I'm still going to the movies. Or I will be once movies open up again. But well, uh, some places <laughs> they are, luckily. Exactly. But, yeah, and, but, uh, no, and, and that's coming soon. Done. That's a that's a big company. I've been looking yeah. look at that site for a long time. So very impressed. Somewhere in there, you dig around those archives, you'll, you'll find some stuff <laughs> by uh, – by Joshua Starnes, uh, and on awesome. Rotten Tomatoes, you can find all my old reviews on uh, on Rotten Tomatoes too. Very um, cool. Yeah, so one of my fellow uh, um, film critics, Scott Chitwood, who was writing there, he let, he was also a big into film, and he kind of let me know around 2007 that he and a partner were were going to start a publishing company, a comic publishing company. They'd always wanted to, and they just decided to do it. So I was like, hey, I've always, you know, I've I've been working in it for you know in different ways. I've got a bunch of ideas for for books that I I want to write so if you need any help if you need any pitches whatever just let me know I'm there and I've kind of lent a hand here and there um, a lot of uh, a lot of extra muscle work or extra eyes or extra hands at conventions and kind of seeing them ideas by email and uh, gradually you know um, especially as the work got, got more and more and the company grew then you know helping them with uh, some of the back office stuff so in 2015 uh, they asked me to come on board, you know, uh, as an actual co-owner and, and take in an ownership share in the company and be one of the publishers. And uh, in order to, you know, formalize basically what I was doing already. And from there, that, that's kind of what my role is now. So I do a lot of uh, a lot of the work with the vendors, with the with the printers, working with uh, some of the other uh, the other creators, getting their books done, doing you know, working on the website and a lot of the marketing stuff and getting things actually out to distributors and out to warehouses and the uh, eventually out to retailers and, and in your hands that's amazing that's uh that's awesome yeah and uh you see you work on the website which is the red five comics.com that's right so um so that's that's pretty cool too i mean uh that's that's got to take i uh, take a lot of your time seems like uh to, to keep that trial and error is what it is, is it? <laughs> <laughs> i'm not a natural programmer or coder and and I, I have to lean a lot on a lot of google videos and we have uh, one of our people came up with a really great redesign for it this year and then i spent a long time um reading a lot of uh, blog postings and watching a lot of youtube videos on how to this on uh, how do i actually make our web hosting service do this and uh getting you know i don't know halfway there i think right well there we got the uh the website up mm -hmm. right there to kind of show people a little bit yeah. about that so you can see all of our, our upcoming titles all the stuff that's going to be out this summer plus we got a great web store so if for some reason you're not near a local re comic shop or your local comic shop doesn't carry red five comics you can uh, buy direct from us and that's and that's that's fantastic that's fantastic so uh, and and plus two if you have a local comic store and they don't carry this then let them know hey i don't like to get this issue um there was several issues that uh, uh different comics that uh, i went to our local store that they normally didn't carry and i brought this to your attention say hey i'd like to order this and i ordered it for myself they ended up ordering a couple of extra issues and then they sold them pretty quick and they're like okay so now they've got them in their rotation that's sometimes that's all it takes to really Get That's people what you love to hear as a publisher. Exactly, you want it, you want them to grow, and and um, mm -hmm. and you as the viewer, as the person that's the consumer, uh, you know, to try out new comics, and then and then you know, hey, like I said, let your let your local comic book store know, um, so that they can uh, they can get these things in for other people to enjoy, mm -hmm. uh, because it is it is definitely a craft, and I mean, you know, if you think you know. 20 30 years ago you know i wouldn't think that like the one of the biggest movies of all time would be in a comic book movie yep. or a series of comic book movies you know but and even some of the movies that are out that are real popular people don't even know that they're based off comics mm -hmm. so yep. those are definitely you know amazing um 
I guess an amazing find. I mean, and the only way people discover those is to is to actually get out and, and check it out. But then again, if you don't have a comic book store, go right to their website. They'll hook you right up. I tell you, that's that's right. that's, that's the way to that's the way to do it. So don't don't let you know just because it's not available in your area, don't let that stop you from getting great stories and great great information. So yeah. let's uh, let's let's get into this uh, to the newest issue, which is um, or the series called the box. Mm-hmm. So how'd you come up with this and, and, and how, how, how has this all come together? So it was, uh, it was one of those things that I have, uh, you know, I have a, a batch of, of maybe uh, four or five different ideas at any one time that at some point I'm hoping to turn into a series or maybe a one shot or something, but to turn into a story. And mm-hmm. some of them might be a paragraph or some of them might, some of them are just like one sentence and some of them are several pages where I sat down and I just had, uh, I, I try to keep like a notebook with me so that it, so when, whenever some weird idea strikes, I can write it down and I can come back to it. And then like, maybe there's a series in this. Um, the box uh, actually comes directly from a, uh, a brainstorming session I was having with a, a good friend of mine for quite a while. And this is probably predates my involvement with Red 5. It was just, it's been sitting there in, 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 a, in some form or another for a while. We were initially we're sitting there going like, let's just come up with like some goofy C-list superheroes that nobody would ever like, like the guys who would be members of the Great Lakes Avengers or something like that. So, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So he had his idea for one, and I'm sitting there like, all right, it's a guy who has a box, but he, and he can take whatever he wants out of it, but the box, uh, but he, he can't control it, and the box gives him whatever he wants. So I, that was the idea. And he, so he's, you know, smoking right. around trying to fight crime. He's like, I need a gun. And he gets, I don't know, a rubber chicken or something, or, or something he doesn't need, <laughs> you know, a pair of tweezers. I'm like, why are you giving me this? Because the box had a mind of its own. And that right. was um, and that was about as much of it as I had for a long time. It kind of sat there um, for for quite a while. And every so often, I would sit and uh, I would add like a little detail to it. Some idea come. Okay, he's got uh, his enemy is a uh, is a mobster who stuck his head in the box, and when it came out, it, he, it had been replaced with a tiger head. So now he's a mobster with a mob boss with a tiger's head. And I wow. write that down. Okay. Like I don't know where that's going to fit in, but I'm going to write that down, and that's in there somewhere. And, um, it, and uh, I knew at some point I wanted to to make something out of it, but I didn't know when that that point was going to be. And uh, and then uh, we hit pandemic year, and I, I uh, uh, for as a publisher, a lot of my work stopped. Comic stores uh, had to close and couldn't allow uh, couldn't allow uh, customers in, so they weren't selling any new product. Um, Diamond Dist- Comics Distribution closed their warehouse and weren't sending out any new books, and they didn't know. And they were basically closed for four months for an entire summer. And uh, they didn't know when they were going to send out new material. And we couldn't, even if they could have, we couldn't send material to them. I, we, we print primarily in Canada and uh, the border closed. So like we had just printed a new run of a, a series called Dragon Whisperer right when everything closed and it got stuck in a warehouse in Canada. And it was it stayed there for basically five months before uh, we could actually get it over to us and to Diamond out to retailers. So. There, you know, we were trying every day to figure out some way to get something to, to people, but it, it, it wasn't, nothing was really moving. So I suddenly had some time on my hands. You know, one of the reasons I, I'd always had an idea of being a publisher was I'm going to write my own stories and get them out there. But this is, uh, in the, the six, almost seven years I've been working with Red 5, this is only the second book of my own. I've worked on one other, that license title. This is only my second book of my own creation that I've actually managed to finish. So like all the other stuff you can kind of tell takes up, uh, a lot of time and there's there's not always right. a huge amount of time for writing in hand so now that we had nothing happening i was like all right i'm going to sit and i'm going to finish one of these ideas and i'm going to turn it into a script and i'm actually going to start getting it drawn and i'm going to i'm going to have the new book made i've gone too long since making a new series um that's fantastic and, and I, I had the thing that i loved the most the idea that i'd really been working on and that uh, i had a really clear vision for and i kept, worked on it for a long time, and then I got horribly stuck and realized I wasn't going to get unstuck. So I put that aside and I took the box out of it for it. And uh, I was like, all right, well, let's see what I can make out of this. And I, I started with um, a couple of gags of things that I knew the main character, who at that time didn't even have a name, could do with the box. And it very quickly um, evolved from there that, uh, oh, he, he's a private investigator. And he uses the box to help him with his cases, and it's kind of like his edge. And oh, he actually maybe he treats it like his partner, and he talks to it, and everybody thinks he's a little weird because he's a little weird. And very quickly, the main character Leo Bloom developed his own voice, and I got this um, eight-page story done, which at the time I was thinking might like might be a good short story for Free Comic Book Day, which could be like a good launching point for the book if there was ever a Free Comic Book Day again, which at that point mm-hmm. in time 
didn't know if they're, if they're ever right, right. Once. You weren't sure. Right. I, but I had that. So I finished like I, I, I was able to write basically that eight page story in about a day, which uh, is going to see the light of day. It's going to be out this summer, right before the box number one comes out. It's going to be in a uh, anthology magazine called Mutiny by uh, um, Francois uh, Sapolsky. So keep an eye out for that. Um, yes. But uh, that was basically I was like, all right, I got the main character. I've got the conceit. I've got uh, his foe. I've kind of got now I have uh, some ideas for stories for what's going to happen to him after his short story. So, all right, let's start getting that down. And by that point, I had um, I introduced Claire, who was uh, um, the main female character, and she had started to become a life of his own. In a lot of ways, more so than some of my other books, this was a, uh, the box came about from two main characters kind of telling me what they would do next. And once they were sort of for, fully realized, it just came a matter of, all right, I'm going to, I can figure out what their adventures are because all I need is a conflict for them and they're going to tell me how they will react to it. And then that became the story. So very, very quickly, I had an outline for all four issues, and then and then um, I was able to draft it very quickly. Usually, I, I write very slowly, and it's not unusual for me to do three or four drafts of, of any given script. Like the the book that I, that I did before this, Spook, I, it was four drafts of each issue, and it was probably two years to write the entire book. And uh, this book, wow. which also four issues, I was done in about two months. So wow. uh, it came together very quickly. <laughs> it really did. That's fantastic. Yeah. I was like, all right, I've got scripts now. I don't want to slow down my momentum. I need, I, I need, uh, I need uh, some art. And even before I'd actually started working on the main series, when I'd just done the eight pages and I was thinking about it for free comic book day, I started looking around for artists. And we get lots of uh, just from on the publisher side. I get um, uh, portfolios sent in all the time for artists looking for work, new artists uh, looking to break mm -hmm. in that sort of thing. So we're always. Uh, we're always um, uh, going through those, looking for really interesting styles. So I, my first book, Spook, we did that, and I ended up finding um, Lissandro Asterin, who draws Redneck for Image now, but he was the artist on on my first book. And so I was looking, I was like, I, there's gotta be, I, I see lots of really good stuff come in here from guys who are talented, who just haven't had like the big break yet. So I wanted to, I didn't know what, uh, like my first book, I knew exactly what I wanted to look like. It was just finding somebody who matched that style in my head. This, I had no idea what I wanted it to look like or what any part right. of it was supposed to look like. I was just going through portfolios, looking for something that caught my eye, and I, and I hit uh, this one from a, a young man named Raymond Estrada, who at the time was in his uh, his final year at uh, the Kubert School. And, um, and he was sending out uh, portfolios while he was finishing his last year um, so that he could try to line up work for himself once he graduated. And I was like, this is, I contacted him, I was like, this is great. I have this really weird idea. I don't know if it's your cup of tea, but I, I want to put together eight pages um, as part of a free comic book day submission we're going to do. And, um, and he, he, he drew those, he drew them, they knocked them out of the park. He had them done in about a month. And uh, so I knew then, like, all right, but as soon as I finish writing this, we're going to do all four issues. Um, I'll, I'll figure out when it's going to come out or where it's going to come out. And if a comic book market exists at that time, but we're going to do all four issues because this was, this is heading into, at this point, heading into, well into the, the closure. And um, but then it wrote, and then when I said that, I think I thought, well, I might be talking to him a year later because I'm, I'm, I'm a very slow writer. But instead, <laughs> two months later, I had four scripts. Like, all right, I've got uh, I've got four scripts. So Raymond, let's uh, let's get started. And he did, and, and it took about a year to get art in and um, and then start starting to get colored pages in. Um, so this is it, this is uh, about two years worth of work that's finally starting to see the light of day in August uh, when issue uh, number one comes out. So it would have been June of 2019 that I got the first uh, inked pages for the eight-page short story. In. Mm -hmm. And now, a little bit more than two years later, uh, the actual book will be finished and the first issue will be hitting stands. Now this um, this photo right there, what is mm -hmm. is that the cover for... That is the cover for issue one. So you can see some of uh, Raymond's uh, fantastic art. That is our, our hero, Leo Bloom, and the box itself uh, getting his mug shot taken uh, on a lineup. So uh, he's not always very good with his mouth. And uh, he's talked himself, <laughs> if, as you when you pick up issue one and read through it, you'll find out that he, is, uh, he has talked himself into some trouble. And he has uh, some worse trouble coming his way. And uh, some great colors by uh, Stephen Del Sala who uh, is coloring the whole issue. And I just got in um, the last batch of colors for him. I think I got four more pages of issue four left to go. And, uh, wow. and this thing is all done. That's exciting. That's exciting. So not to, obviously, 
it's it's a it's a, it's a four uh, issue series. That's right. Um, so I guess not to, not to rush, obviously, but I mean, does it um, does it uh, lend itself to a possible continuation, or uh, the story can it continue on? Oh, for sure, there is. You know, Good. You're, you're going to want to read it to the very last page, yeah. And then uh, from there, hopefully, you're going what after the last page, and uh, and you know, I'm always going to see how well the uh, the first series does. But if it does well enough right. to to cover making another series, then uh, I have. A, uh, a long notebook now because I would stop ah. I was writing it. I would write down more ideas for, okay, what comes next? What comes next? What else are right. the problems they're having? And some of those are definitely hinted at. Some some threads are started that you will see within these cool. first four issues. So definitely if there is a an appetite, you know, they're, they're, it ends on a note where hopefully you're going to want to know what happens next. And uh, and I do know what happens next, so I just hope I Good. get a chance to tell everybody. Right, right. Well, um, we were lucky enough that you, that you sent us uh, issue number one, uh, and it is it will suck you right in, is what I'm what I'm telling you. It's uh, it's very captivating. The, the story writing is very well done. Um, yeah, I like the um, um, you know some of the surprises from the box as it were and uh and then the artwork is is absolutely amazing and captivating so if, if you got if you pick the good artist to, to illustrate uh, your vision so yeah I get so, to very impressed series before uh somebody else finds out how good he is because pretty soon he's gonna be getting offered uh, a lot of work and uh, and, and i won't be able to afford him anymore which is, which is always <laughs> but, uh, but right you know, it's great <laughs> well like really i said if it, well, if anything, you know, you could say, "Hey, he started with me." That's <laughs> right. right, right. That's the goal. and then maybe I, yours I will be so successful it. that he'll <laughs> stay with you. You know, like, hey, that's my bread and butter now. So it, it, that's it awesome. Happens sometimes it, it does. It happens. does. So, it does. See. Well, that's I mean, that's exciting. So, uh, so you're rushes out to buy issue one, and uh, if they do, if you all, everyone who's listening to this goes out and tells your story, you need a, you need an issue one, then. Uh, uh, definitely, that will happen. Yeah. So, so uh, I know what is the what is the publishing date again that should be available? It will be on stands on August eighteenth. It uh, stores are ordering it right now, so they're figuring yeah. out right now exactly how many they want to uh, they want to order. They're going to be ordering through the end of June. So, if you hear this, go out now. Tell your store you want it. Uh, if they don't use Diamond, tell them, just tell them the title and they'll be able to find it. If they do use Diamond, tell them that they want to order J-U-N-211-738, which is the order code for the nice. box number one, J-U-N-211-738. And they can I'll put that in the description of this video, too. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Exactly. I, I, I'm going to go by my uh, local comic book store in the morning when I get up. And I'm going to go by there and I'm going to order uh, issue number one, two, three, and four. Everything I can order, I'll make sure I get the whole series. So mm -hmm. so that's uh, that's exciting. So go ahead. Is there, what else would you want to tell us about the issue? I would say that uh, we're uh, besides just uh, which the, the the great A cover from uh, Raymond, we're doing um, some low print run variant covers with a selection nice. of retailers. So Hive Comic will be carrying one. Stadium Comics will be carrying one. Exchange Collectibles, um, Hanahan Comics are going to be carrying one. So there's going to be about seven or eight potential covers. Um, there's going to be one. Uh, uh, Stadium's also coming carrying really nice metal variation. Um, I've seen almost all the art uh, for all of them. They look great. Alan Quaz doing one for Exchange Collectibles that looked great. Stan Yak did the one for Hive Comics, and uh, it is spectacular. So uh, if you follow uh, Red Five Comics or follow me on Twitter uh, at Josh Darns Film, you're gonna in the next couple of weeks you're gonna start to see uh, what those uh, covers start uh, looking like as I get scans of the finished covers. So uh, they're gonna be really low print run. So you'll be able to go to those retailers and pick those up. Um, and then pick up a car reading copy of just the A cover as well. Fantastic. Now, um, tell tell everybody that might not know what's what's the importance of the, of the variant cover. It's uh, besides you know they have some top notch artists on them making mm -hmm. really really interesting really great covers. Um, there'll be another one from CBSN by this fantastic uh, British artist named Simeon Aston that uh, I'm hoping to work with some more. Um, but they're also going to be really low print run. I think the one that uh, 
that is the largest print run is only 250 copies. Some wow. of these, they're all, we're only going to be running about 100 copies of them. So they will be very scarce, very rare collector's items that uh, you will want to grab a hold of. And then exactly. Hold. Very sought after. Those yes. things are, that's that's what, that's what makes it uh, important that exactly. a lot of comic books uh, do that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it, it, you know, comics um, themselves, you know, if, you, if you're like, you know, I don't know if I can get into comics, they're not that expensive to just get a, you know, an issue nope. going to your local comic store. They're very affordable. So, you know, that's the, that's the amazing thing. It's a really good, you know, it's a good way to get your, if you have a, a younger uh, child or someone, you know, as a young adult, it's, it's a, they're, it's a, they're a good reading. I yeah. enjoyed comics growing up. I mean, you know, they were, you know, it you know made me want to read because I want to know what it was saying. You know, so, so that, you know. that's what I loved about them too. Before I got into to you know bigger books, uh, it was it was comics that led me into it and gave me a, a love of reading. Before I was a, a big reader, something I've been kind of trying to push on to, to my kids as well as a, a really good way to introduce someone to read. And uh, and a lot of those books that I read kind of find their way or inspirations into this. There's a lot of. Uh, a lot of classic noir writing, a lot of Dashiell Hammett and Raymond Chandler. And it's a, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's very much a box is very much a mystery, a kind of a classic American noir story, just with a magic box in the middle of it. Instead of uh, instead of the Maltese Falcon that everyone's looking right. for, it's a full of covered in diamonds. It's a uh, a box that can give you anything you ask from it, uh, whatever that might be. So it's something that potentially even more valuable. And uh, yeah, the hard boiled detective has to. Uh, figure out how to keep it out of everyone's hands and keep himself out of trouble. So you can't get more, uh, more Sam Spade than that. I love it. I love it. I, I'm, I'm so excited for you uh, and for everybody to get to read uh, the box and uh, hopefully they'll get to finish and watch uh, com- complete the whole series. Um, so that's, that's, um, that's exciting because like I said, it's, it's a good product. And, and the, and the wonderful thing about comics is, you know, they can, they can be, heroic and superheroes and they can be love stories and they can be funny and mm-hmm. they can be scary and then they can be terrifying and then they can be a total mind trip or comics can take you in so many different places and genres. Yeah. That's, um, that's truly amazing. And there's pretty much something for everybody in comics. If you, if you just go into a comic store and, and look yeah. around and, and give yourself a chance, if you've never picked up a comic, they are amazing. And, you know, there's times when, and yes, the comic book store isn't as prevalent as it used to be, mm-hmm. but they're not gone because yeah. people are really still enjoying comics. And like I said, when they change mediums to, to movies and, mm-hmm. and other medium you know, TV shows and, you know, some of the, you know, like Loki, you know, yeah. would you have ever thought that the, That'd great character uh, yeah. exactly and it's fantastic yeah you know and it's just um those kind of things that uh that you know they just come from you know like one of my favorite comic book movie adaptations uh as a younger was the crow yep i love the comics and then when the movie came out with brandon lee they really i was just it. It, was, it was they fantastic. did they really did and it was just you know it's 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 amazing, even the, even the comic book uh, Red. I enjoyed that, mm-hmm. and then when they made it with the Bruce Willis and the, you yeah. know and then the sequel, I was like, you know, that's great. But a lot of people were like, you know, oh, this is really good. It's hey, very it be a comic. It was fun. Yeah, how could this be a comic? But it, it, yeah, it, exactly. It <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. But with, with a lot of people, when they're educated like that, they're just like, that was a comic. Yeah, that's one of your favorite movies. Well, but that was a comic book, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you know? So it kind of not all hopefully unless it up. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. And sometimes there's some super villain bad guys and sickos and stuff out there too. So, yep. you know, you just, uh, you never know. Let me see if I can grab something here real quick. <laughs> Go like this on the fly, uh, podcasting. Woo-hoo. Here's my little box of some stuff. Let me see. I know there's one in here I wanted to show you. Okay. Oh, I'm going to have to turn around where I can see it better. Because I had that just the other day to show another one of my friends. I was, uh, when I was growing up, I was big into the, um, I got into the Marvel Super Specials. Okay. (laughs) So, my first comic um, that I guess, I shouldn't, it wasn't my first comic by any means, but my first 
the comics that I just I couldn't put down. I just I keep grabbing the wrong one. There we go. That I couldn't put down was uh, the first Marvel Super Special. Oh wow, the giant size kiss, man! Uh, you know what? And that's actually something of a collector's item now. So uh, is, this yeah. particular issue probably wouldn't be because, like you said, unfortunately, yeah. I, I read it so much that I, I the cover came off. But you know, it's all still there. That's what happened. And to me. Uh, no, my but, first but man. was uh, was Star Wars number one because I was quite the Star Wars head, but. Uh, by the time you know I was six or seven years old, it did not have a cover anymore, so it would not be right. worth much. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, it's worth something to me because, exactly. like I said, I really enjoyed it. And then a lot of people were like, you know, I mean, they had they fought Doc Doom. They I mean, come Doctor on, yeah. in this issue is Spider Man and Wolverine. Yeah, and you know, I'm like, that was so cool well, to me. They were like ha practically halfway to being superheroes already. With the, exactly. With the <laughs> we're gonna there take a go. band. And put them into a comic book. Which better band could you have picked? Exactly, exactly. I've always thought to myself, which I'm sure, I'm sure there's thousands of reasons why Gene wouldn't do it unless it was money involved. But uh, I mean, I thought it would be cool if there was, uh, you know, they did like some of the cameos, like um, mm -hmm. in the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, with the yep. um, with the Howard the Duck, and yeah, you know, other other you know, kind of unique. Well, especially characters. with all the '70s music and. Uh, and the mixtapes, it would fit. Oh right my in. gosh! Yeah, yeah, they could have Gene Simmons in the background mm -hmm. of some scene, walk through, and and and. I in, knew in he was an alien. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You know, because if you read the comic, we <laughs> had the you know, yeah. they're like Space Ace would send them wherever. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, not to get silly, but it's just uh, it, that was the and, and they were big comic book fans. That's how come he yeah. got to do that to begin with. That's why he yeah. wanted to uh, to do that. It was one of the ways he learned English. <laughs> you right. know, growing up was comic books. So, yeah. so yeah, comic books are amazing. Uh, and, uh, I hope everybody gives them a chance. And this, this, this issue that you've done and, and worked really hard on, uh, the box is, um, labor of love. Uh, so like, there you go. There you can, go. Uh, can, uh, can, uh, find out about it and, and uh, take something out of it. And you've got, uh, you've got other ideas, I'm sure in the can, there's things that you're working on. Yeah, uh, there's a, there's a, the series that I uh, that I got horrible writer's block on is uh, <laughs> I've, I've taken back out now that that is done and I am uh, I'm working on it. I'm not yet ready to announce it, but uh, sure, I'm sure. working hard on it. I have a series that actually predates the box. I have a uh, a outer space, a, a real space opera um, spy, also a spy story, a kind of space opera James Bond story called Curiosity Ooh, that, uh, love it. uh, is, is too long. It's the price why it's not finished. So I've been working on it. I chisel away at it and I've been working on it. Like a little bit of art gets done here and a little bit of art. I'm, I'm talking with an artist right now, hoping to, uh, like, um, you know, I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like I've got a book coming out now. I want to keep on that train. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to finish this thing. I'm going to get to, you know, I don't want to lose this momentum. So I want to, uh, the creative juices are flowing. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to jump on this and finally finish this, uh, this thing that I've had been working on for a long time about this, uh, this secret agent who has to uh, discover who is brainwashing all the, the heads of the galaxy. And, and he, he finds himself getting thrust into a world of really, trippy weirdness so it's got a little bit of uh jack kirby and a bit of heavy metal Ooh, i like that of, uh, of james bond and also in and uh in flashboard and all sort of swirled together so uh, that's something you're hitting that all the good points for me man i'm, I'm excited <laughs> so I just for that right get now it drawn i got it written now i just got to get it drawn and um right one day soon uh, you will actually see that in your stores and hopefully my next project as well and um and uh, I've got a few other things. I've got a sequel for my first series, Spook, um, sitting, uh, which was about uh, the CIA trying to capture ghosts and use them as spies. And uh, wow, that's I've got, cool. I've, I finished the first volume quite a few years ago, 2015, 2016. And uh, I've got I've got notes for a second volume. I really want to uh, I really want to uh, work on that. So hopefully there will be an announcement about that at some point this year. So keep your, your eyes tuned for that. And I, I've got a few Definitely. other things and uh, I have a, a cartoon series on Netflix that uh, uh, was uh, started as a, a license, as some licensed material red five worked on that. I, I wrote to the episodes. It's not my show, but I came on and wrote right. for it. So if you've got, got a little kid who loves, uh, 
loves Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, loves cartoons. Tell him to go look for uh, Kulapari, Army of Frogs. It's about uh, magic ninja frogs in the outback fighting evil scorpions and spiders who want to take their land. Uh, but I wrote all of uh, all of season two. And, awesome. Uh, Mark Hamill did one of the voices, so I get to, to check off the checkbox of writing dialogue yeah. for, for Mark Hamill, uh, who I've never met. Wow. I wrote a bunch wow. of dialogue, Still. but uh, I didn't know what it, how it would sound until I... I saw finished episodes, but um, and is that available now on Netflix? It's available now on Netflix. Wow! And what's yeah. it called again? One more time. Kulapari, K U L I P A R I. We'll put that's that in our show notes as well at the end of the description here, so there people can check that out. That's awesome, man. That's that's yeah. exciting. Well, uh, Joshua, man, I hopefully um, if there's any other things that come up or when projects get complete, and you would mm -hmm. uh, hopefully you had a good enough time today that if you'd like to, you're more than welcome to come back. Anytime you'd like to come and talk about any projects that you're working on, Joshua, it's a, it's, it's been a pleasure having you on today. Is there anything else that we need to cover today? Those are, that's like all the big stuff. Go check out red5.com. You will see red yes. comicscom You're going to see all kinds of cool books. The box is one of them, but we're going to have a lot of awesome stuff coming out starting in August and on through the fall. You're going to see some really good books coming out. Some of them are getting ready to be announced in the next couple of weeks. And uh, hopefully, yeah, I'd like to maybe if I if, if things work out right, I can come back on maybe towards the end of the summer as the box is coming out and actually get to announce some what some of those those next big things are that are that are in the works now. Well, you have an open invitation, sir. Anytime you All want right. to come on, we would love to have you back on. All right. Thank love you so you. much. Thank you, Joshua Starnes. Thank you so much for being on our podcast today. Thank you very much. And hopefully everybody will check it out. Check out all the stuff in the description of the show notes and, uh, and go to our website if you want to at outbreakpodcast.com for more exclusive videos. And you can always email us, us at outbreakpodcast at gmail.com. If you have questions or concerns, that's how that is how, um, um, Joshua got a hold of us. <laughs> so you never know what might happen. And again, yeah. Joshua, thank you so much for being a part of escape pod. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you for listening to this episode of Escape Pod. If you enjoyed it, please like the episode and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you would like to be a part of future podcasts, then email us at outbreakpodcast at gmail.com. And be sure to visit our website, outbreakpodcast.com, for more episodes, show notes, photos, and other podcasts on the Outbreak Podcasting Network. That's outbreakpodcast.com. <laughs>